Guten Tag. We started this lesson series with counters that operate in whole powers of 2, 8, 16, 32, etc. We then examined a design for the most common alternative with the decade counter. Now we'll develop a simple strategy that will allow us to build an asynchronous counter to any number. We'll also consider how a counter can be interpreted as a frequency divider. On the right side, we see a schematic for the same asynchronous 4-bit binary counter that we have studied before. Previously, we interpreted this as counting from decimal 0 through 15. This timing diagram shows that count in action, beginning with 0, 0, 0, 0, then changing to 0, 0, 0, 1 on the next clock cycle, then 0, 0, 1, 0, and so on. What else do you notice about the pattern in this timing diagram? The periods of each waveform get longer as we move down, and we can be more specific than that. The periods double through each flip-flop. In the time it takes for the clock to go up and down twice, Q0 goes up and down once. In the time it takes for Q0 to go up and down twice, Q1 goes up and down once, and so on down the diagram. The numbers for each waveform's period are shown here. The clock has a period of 20 nanoseconds. Q0 is at 40 nanoseconds. Q1 doubles that to 80. Q2 doubles that to 160. And Q3 doubles that to 320 nanoseconds. In total, because there are four flip-flops, the final period is 2 raised to the 4, or 16 times longer than the system clock period. Recall that period is the inverse of frequency. So when we double the period, we cut the frequency in half. Or when we multiply the period by 16, we divide the frequency by 16. There may be times when we need to reduce clock frequency. Let's say a system clock has a frequency of 1 gigahertz but a certain group of operations must work slower than that due to limitations in that group, such as different hardware or longer propagation delays. We can still leave the system clock at its original rate for the regular operations and also pass its signal through a frequency divider for use in this side group. Because of this, we sometimes use a counter, but not for counting at all. For instance, we can call this example counter a divide by 16 device, or div 16 for short. In doing so, we'd ignore the three less significant bits and only use Q3. In these next two slides, we have some short calculations to demonstrate how we can match a divide by X counter to the particular frequency division needed. First, how many div 10 devices or decade counters, are required to divide by 100,000. Pause the video and see if you can figure it out. Well, one div 10 would divide by 10. The next one in series divides by 100, the next one by 1,000, the next one by 10,000, and another one makes 100,000. So, five counters are needed in total. A quicker way to see this is to realize that 10 raised to the fifth power produces 100,000. The 10 is the division from each device. The 100,000 is the total division desired. The 5 is what we found to be the number of devices needed. Next problem is a little trickier, only because we are less used to working in hexadecimal. How many cascaded div 16 devices are required to divide by 4096. Pause the video. The answer here is three. One device would divide by 16, the second divides that by 16, giving 256, the third divides that by 16, giving 4096. Or succinctly, 16 raised to the power of three yields 4096. So, three devices are needed. The direct way to answer any of these questions is to use logarithms. I know logarithms are most students' fuzziest point from algebra class, 
and it was mine too. But they really are useful. Simply put, logarithms tell you the exponent. By using this formula, we can directly identify the number of counters. In the numerator, compute the logarithm of the total division needed, which would be 4096 in the previous question. In the denominator, compute the logarithm of the division produced by each device, which would be 16. Divide numerator by denominator, and you have your answer. Important note, this assumes that all devices use the same count, e.g. no mixing div 10 and div 16 devices. Let's apply that formula to help with a slightly more difficult question. How many div 16 devices are required to convert an input frequency of 1 megahertz into 15 hertz. Try this one out on your own. The first thing to do is identify the total division desired, which isn't given directly here. Instead, we compute it by dividing the original frequency, 1 megahertz, by the desired frequency, 15 hertz. You see this here, with that prefix mega expanded to show its number. 1 million. The result is approximately 67,000. Now we apply the formula. The numerator shows log of total division. The denominator shows log of each device's division. The result is 4, so 4 counters are needed. But we do have a little problem. Rounding error. Even with a contrived problem like this, which was meant to give us a whole number answer, the answer is not exactly 4. It is rare that we will be able to precisely create any clock frequency. You may have noticed this problem yourself in cheap digital watches. When you look at the clock and you see it counting seconds, they look just like true seconds, and they are really close. But even if its frequency is off by one thousandth of a second, that'll equate to about four seconds per hour, or a minute and a half each day. So, a week later, when you notice you are 10 minutes late to every meeting, you decide to buy a new watch. The goal with this, and really any design, is not perfection, but close enough. As a designer, part of your job is to identify what level of precision is required to not cause major errors in your application. Let's look at one more problem in which we would run into a major error. How many Div 16 devices? are required to convert an input frequency of 18 kilohertz into 3 kilohertz. Following our formula, the result is 0.65. We need a fraction of a div 16 device. That is not possible. The device can only work in factors of 16. So, what can we do to accomplish this frequency division? Notice that by going from 18 to 3 kilohertz, the total division is an even 6. Therefore, if we build a divide by 6 counter, we'd have success. We could attempt a design similar to our decade counter, where we analyze when each flip-flop should be allowed to toggle. But with asynchronous counters, there is a simple approach that can be used to count to any number. That general approach will be illustrated with this particular divide by 6 example. First, a div 6 device should not count to 6. It should count 0 through 5, much like a decade counter goes 0 through 9. But our approach here will actually let the count reach 6 very briefly before recycling back to 0. First, we set up the basic structure for a binary counter, with negative edge triggered flip-flops being instructed to toggle by the outputs of the previous flip-flops. This setup is identical to what we saw a couple videos ago, but here with 3 bits, since that's all we need to reach decimal 6. Then we take advantage of the force clear ports on these flip-flops. Notice how all of those ports are tied to the same logic. There are two cases that will cause this AND gate to drop low, and thus reset the count to 000. The first is if this manual clear prime switch is dropped low. Nothing new here. That's just the same manual reset operation we have seen previously. The second case is if this NAND gate drops low. This will only occur for the minterm A2 and A1 and A0 prime. In other words, 
That is when A2 is high, A1 is high, and A0 is low. That's the binary code for decimal 6. So this counter is just trucking along doing its binary count. 3, 4, 5, 6. It actually reaches 6, or 110, and then immediately is forced to 000. At first, this sounds like a poor design. We are letting the counter reach an invalid state. But that brief invalid time is just a glitch. And we have already seen that glitches are pervasive in asynchronous counters already. We can handle that glitch just like before, with the help of a strobed tri-state buffer, as you see here. This leads us to the general procedure for building a divide by x counter, where x is any whole number. First, identify the number of bits needed to reach x. Second, follow the standard binary counter setup with one flip-flop for each bit. Third, decode for x and use this to reset all the flip-flops through the asynchronous clear ports. For example, if x equals 6, decode for binary 110. If x equals 9, decode for binary 1001. Finally, strobe the counter output to mitigate the effect of glitches. One thing to note about this approach is that it creates a count up device and then uses the max count to time the recycle. In theory, a divide by x device could also count down and then recycle at zero, or it could follow some arbitrary sequence that recycles after a set number of values. The key point is that it has a periodic behavior, and thus the output frequency is a whole number division of the input frequency. Finally, I want to re-emphasize that all of the discussion so far has been for asynchronous counters. In our next lessons, we will explore the operation and design of synchronous counters.